What's going on this Alex USA days? Uh, so I would like to talk in this video about uh, the actual recession, what's going on um, and how to try to avoid it, how to prepare uh, for the recession, right? So uh, some of the recent firings, uh, I'm gonna show it on the screen and uh, this is mostly like from open sources and online search and so on. Um, we can see that Meta laid off around 11, thousand people so approximately 13 percent of the workforce twitter uh 3700 and even more now with other people uh leaving the company amazon planned to lay off about 10,000 people other companies like intel robin hood stripe salesforce lyft microsoft shopify netflix coinbase are doing some layoff or freezing hiring so that's definitely gonna uh, decrease the amount of jobs available on the market right uh, a lot of companies are depreciating, their stock is losing value, they try to recoup losses uh, by letting people go, they try to freeze other projects to kind of uh, save resources and still show some numbers uh, that they're not losing money, maybe a little bit profitable, but not as planned. But this is definitely signs of recession, and this is going to trickle down from bigger companies to smaller companies. Um, on top of that, uh, we're going to see a real estate crisis because Fed bumped up percentage on the real estate for the new houses right around six seven percent so it's really high very high with the prices that grew twice as much uh was in like last couple of years uh the housing is unaffordable really now there's a lot of new inventory coming online that people won't be able to afford or buy so I think we're going to see like real estate crisis unfolding within the next six months or so. We might see it. I'm not 100% sure. So all of this uh, coupled with inflation, growing prices, uh, I mean, this is all going to uh, lead to a recession, right? Probably for the IT workers, it's not going to be as bad as a dot-com bubble because during dot-com bubble, the amount of jobs lost may be on the same scale, but overall job availability was a lot less. Uh, not everything was so digitalized back then as it is now. I think overall, we're, there's still going to be uh, jobs available, a lot of jobs available. You just will have more people competing for the jobs. Um, the reason why we're not going to lose IT industry completely because everything uh, has some code in it, you know, code needs support. The devices already on the market still needs to be supported. The devices that are being in development still, uh, they need to be tested, right? So it's not like we're gonna take away everyone's gadgets and apps and uh, I don't know, microwaves, coffee makers, x-rays from, and all anything that has code, cars, like cars have hundreds and millions of line, uh, lines of, well, about millions of lines of code in the cars right today nowadays so it's not like it's gonna go away everything is uh is a lot more advanced and uh, digitalized compared to the dot-com bubble when the bubble k uh, became uh, happened was dot-com right so the job's gonna be there um and I looked through some numbers and those are you just can go and do some search on LinkedIn I think uh I made a video about a couple of months ago on the job availability right now in the market. I think it went down for about, was about like a hundred thousand jobs available. This is within a month's period, uh, both for developers in the United States and their four QA. So I th now it's about a hundred thousand less for each. Um, there's still a lot of jobs, right? But you know, less than there were uh, there still will be jobs available but more people competing for those jobs uh so what i suggest doing or what i would do in preparation for the upcoming recession to feel comfortable with it so i would definitely focus on a couple tools right popular tools uh if you're manual qa or even if you're doing some automation but still i would pick up something that is quite widely used uh readily available there's a lot of resources online to learn those tools. I'm gonna to post some links in the description to the video where you can pick those uh, tools up. I don't have videos on uh, those tools yet, but I will add some to my uh, manual QA course as we go with it. And I will have like probably separate playlists on those tools later once I'm done with the manual course uh, for the QA engineer. But I would recommend just picking up Postman and Cypress uh, both of those are very user friendly. There's a vast documentation, big community that support those. Also, give some good uh, 
links to start get started and like learn those tools so this is they are hot on the market right uh both use javascript and uh very very uh, user friendly especially for someone who's just starting the other thing that i would do is definitely just go ahead and update your resume and update your linkedin profile uh, a lot of uh reach that i get in terms of hey are you looking for a job are you available in the market are happening on linkedin i get uh daily messages uh if i'm available in the market if i'm looking for a new job it doesn't even say on my profile that i'm available not really but uh get contacted by recruiters daily so having a nice linkedin that is filled out that is visible that has all the sections uh is updated with your recent positions how if you got some certification in recently you add them there so having that uh helps a lot so you're going to get contacted by recruiters if you have updated linkedin and keeping your resume up to date is you know is a good way to make sure that uh, if you're lacking something you see offers um maybe you need to pick up a tool and put on your resume so uh, make sure it's updated it's not like from five years ago uh the other thing that i would definitely do is practice interviews uh, so uh by practice interviews i mean i got like a bunch of typos here um I mean, start uh, looking for a job. And even if you're not going to change a job, just go ahead and go through like three, four, maybe five interviews, uh, different places uh, for the positions that seems like close to yours job right now. Just understand um, how is the market? What kind of questions you will be asked? What kind of skills you may be lacking or what you need to prepare? Maybe you need to, you know, uh, look into your soft skills maybe you need to uh, prepare a little better for for the actual job search when or if a recession happens and you your position going to be under risk right um so essentially just start a job search i don't i'm not telling like change a job but you know just do a little practice because interview in itself is a skill uh separate from actually doing your work uh funny how it works but yes so pass an interview is one skill set and actually doing your job is another skill set uh number four and this is more about me i guess but um just a, i guess a general thing but i would think into cutting costs like if it's possible or how if sometimes how you will be doing that so maybe getting roommates friends or clothes lift close by maybe thinking about combined rent moving some people in that you're comfortable with and you have good connection with. uh maybe if something goes really bad and you work remotely you can move back to your parents place uh, for a time being if they have already like uh house paid off and already not bearing as many costs as you but because if you're paying high rent so uh, those are probabilities how you can actually start you know cutting costs or planning to cut costs if something happens to your job uh and number five i would say just practice algorithm uh now uh for qa jobs the algorithms are not as complex as for developers but uh you might get asked some algorithms so like just the basic level algorithm i would keep on practicing even though if you're not like in automation yet you're just doing manual qa but you pick in some tools like postman cypress um uh, having solving a couple of algorithms or just writing them and looking at the problem how it how it's explained one or two a day or maybe every other day uh gonna go a long way because it's a quite common thing now during interviews that they're gonna ask you over so yeah um that is pretty much what i would do or what i will be doing uh for the next i, I guess half a year in the preparation of the recession was gonna really hit uh there's definitely the waves that are going right now uh, and it's already been uh recession is already being felt but uh it didn't get all the way through the market i think right now it starts with bigger companies that have public stock um that are trying to recoup their losses somehow because the stock uh value depreciated they closed in the project they were not uh fully invested in so but from there I think it's going to trickle down into smaller companies, uh, medium level companies. I think who will have less impact uh, in terms of letting people go? Uh, companies that maybe like in the startup phase and they got already funded. 
So they have money in the bank essentially to run their business for maybe like next year or two. Uh, maybe they'll freeze the hiring, but not, not necessarily they're going to let go, especially uh, smaller companies tend to have uh, gaps in their staff. So they run in short hands, uh, many times startups, uh, especially if they're in funding phase. So they'll have the funds for some period to function properly with the staff that they currently have. Um, without firing people. So maybe that will not get affected as much as like bigger companies because a, a lot of those layoffs and the huge numbers of jobs being lost are mostly among like the biggest companies that immediately can fire a large amount of people and save like millions or even billions uh, in spending. All right. So hopefully this helps. Uh, I'm going to provide some links in the description for my manual QA course that I'm working on and for some tools on how to learn Postman in Cypress. All right. Uh, this was Alex USA Days. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.